We are back at 812 with more of our exclusive interview with Kai Chase, Michael Jackson's personal chef. She was in his rented home on the day he died. Kai, again, good morning to Thank you. Good morning. Um, when we left off, we were talking about the fact that you had um, left the home for about three weeks in May, came back in June, the beginning of June, and you noticed a change at that point in Michael Jackson's behavior and his appearance. T tell me about that. When I was in the home in April, um, Ms. Mr. Jackson would come downstairs uh, routinely and come downstairs and before he went on his rehearsals looking wonderful, you know, sharp with his black jeans on and blazer, aviator glasses, going out, going to the studio, upbeat, chipper, eating and, you know, feeling really good about himself. But when I came back in June, I noticed he was a little thinner and I was wondering, had he been eating? You know, had, had, he been, had he been eating? And then I thought to myself, he's a dancer. You know, he's a dancer. His body's his tool. He's working very hard. And he did say to you at one point, they're killing me, reference to the fact that he was working so hard, rehearsing yeah, so yeah. hard. Yes, yes. He, he, said, he said, I need you to take care of me. I need you to feed me healthy like you have been. I need you to, do you have my beet juice? Do you have my beet juice in the refrigerator? Yes, Mr. Jackson, we have those things for you. They're killing me. They're killing me. I'm rehearsing very hard, you know, maybe two rehearsals a day. What about reports, Kai, that he had an eating disorder, a serious eating disorder? I never saw it. I, I, I never saw any of that. I would actually see the man eat. He was normal acting. He was very excited about this tour. He was eating. He was interacting with his children and game time, play time, and dinners with his children and lunch with his children. So I never saw anything different until when I came back.
The uh, problem with the, uh, the death certificate is there was no doctor to sign a death certificate, which then requires that the coroner become involved, because if there is no doctor to sign a death certificate, then it falls to the coroner to do that function. So that was that was why we became involved in the first place. Had he had he been under the care of a doctor and that doctor been willing to sign a death certificate, the coroner would not have become involved. Now, following the pronouncement of death, Dr. Cooper, um, did you ever uh, consult with or request uh, Dr. Murray to sign a death certificate? No. Okay. Is that something you would have done in this situation? No. Why not? Mr. Jackson was my patient, and I didn't really have an explanation for why he was dead. Okay. And it therefore, in my mind, was a coroner's case. He when you say it was a coroner's case, you mean that it will be referenced to the coroner's office for uh, an autopsy and investigation? Correct. Okay. I did not have a conversation with Dr. Murray about the death certificate, no. And it wouldn't be his decision, it would be yours. Is that accurate? That would be accurate. Did you ever uh, consult with or request uh, Dr. Murray to sign a death certificate? No. Is that something you would have done in this situation? No. Why not? Mr. Jackson was my patient, and I did not have a conversation with Dr. Murray about the death certificate, no. And it wouldn't be his decision, it would be yours. Is that accurate? That would be accurate.